But um, the last stream ended up getting cut off, and it was it just was kind of heartbreaking. Hopefully, this one is gonna work. But I don't really know where this is streaming though. Like, it's not we have actually one. I know, but that's from Facebook. It's actually not streaming to YouTube because on YouTube we would have to create a whole new event. It's not streaming. Is it on YouTube? Are we live? On YouTube? <laughs> Are we live right now? Uh, we're, on, we're on YouTube. We're live. We're live. Okay, guys. So, nice. We're getting some people back. Awesome. I, I don't know what happened, guys. The live stream broke, and it also broke our heart. But we're on part two, and we're just finishing up. This is where we're at right now. Okay? Like, look. We finished... We, so far, we set up the React app using Create React app. We set up Firebase. We set up React Router. We built the nav bar. We built the banner. We built the product component. We introduced React Context API. We set up Add to Basket button. We built Checkout page. We even built the subtotal component. And right now, guys, we are at the part where we are going to add the login functionality and then exactly. deploy the app. So with that said, let's get right into it. Let's do it. Let's so go. So what we have is we have the login page right here. And we basically want to now, let's go ahead and style everything. And then what we're going to do is we need to connect Firebase to um, our React app. Okay. So yeah. in order to do that, um, what we need to do now is go ahead and um, so for the first thing is connect Firebase. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Firebase.js. So Firebase dot js here yeah. and basically right now inside of this snippet what i want to do is i've got a nice little neat little piece of code that you guys would have seen in other examples so firebase so here we go so i'm going to go ahead and we need our config so right now if we go into firebase.com uh kazi Hello. Yep, 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 yep. I'm here. Yeah. So if you go on to firebase.com. Oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, okay, my here bad. we go. Yep. I was just complaining so to uh, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, firebase.com, and let's drop in the config. Oh, yeah, I, I so, got that. I mean, I have it copied since the start of time. Yeah. So we just need <sighs> that at this point now. So we basically want to paste that in here. Nice. Look at that. Awesome. There we go. And basically what this is going to do, guys, is we need to go ahead and in the terminal now, we need to do npm i Firebase. So that will install all of the Firebase dependencies. So if you're going to go ahead and do that, Kazi, so npm i Firebase. Awesome. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is this will actually Paolo connect. Keep Paolo the... keeps asking this question. We should probably answer it. He says, what if there is no connection when developing with Firebase? Is there some kind of emulator that runs locally? Yeah. So uh, if, it's, if you're regarding your... Um, so for cloud functions, so any sort of serverless work, yes, there is an emulator. Um, for database, I believe there is an emulator for database. Um, they have a lot of support for offline. So even if you have set everything up, uh, and then you start pushing it, data into your database, uh, it will actually sort of queue it up. So it will queue up all of the pushes uh, in a really, really clever way. And then when you get an internet connection again, it will push that to the database. And it will even sync the sort of timestamps. It's, it's really clever how it does that. Um, but they do have a bunch of emulators, yes. They do. Good question. So now what we're going to do is we have all of the keys. So we have the keys here. Um, and let's go ahead and we've got, so these two things right here at the bottom are basically setting up a database instance. We don't actually need the DB right now. We can go ahead and get rid of that. We need the authentication. So here, firebase.auth, okay? And what we're going to do is let's go into our login.js and let's go ahead and start. So what we did right there, guys, is we actually just connected Firebase to our React front end. So it's that simple, okay? It's really that simple to get that working. Um, so what we're going to do Let's here see. is I'm going basically going to 
add a class name. So we're sticking to our BEM naming conventions. We're saying class name login. And here I am saying, I want to have, firstly, I want to have a link at the top. So I'm going to copy a snippet here. I want the link at the top to basically be, it's a link that goes back to the homepage and it's going to be an image and the source is, all this is guys, it's, it's, it's a, a link to, um, it's an Amazon picture. So again, I'm going to double line it so you guys can just copy that if you'd like. So I'm going to double line this right now. So there you go. You see that all on one page. Um, so you can pause it there and you can copy that out. So this is essentially just, uh, all it is right there is actually just the, uh, I'm just opening up on my logo. So all that is actually right now is the Amazon logo. So you should be able to see, Kazi, that you can see the Amazon logo somewhere. Um, are you right? Oh, we need to do NPM start. Oh, yeah. Yep. Here we go. Somebody said they spent five hours today on creating a nav bar with Flexbox. Awesome. It's uh, that logo is up. Nice. Awesome. Nice. So what we're going to do now is go into login.css and make that not look so ugly. So because that looks really <laughs> nasty right now. So I'm going to go ahead and where we have that at the moment, I'm going to say width. So I want that to be a fixed width because we don't ever want it to get bigger than a certain size. So login logo and here i'm going to say it is a width of 100 pixels so width of 100 pixels and here it is uh, object fit contain so again we want to keep the aspect ratio and what i'm doing now is i'm adding a margin left and a margin right of auto so that it centers actually from for now just leave it there just leave it like that for now um, what we're going to do now is so we have the amazon logo right um, I'm going to show you very clearly how we do this. So we have the Amazon logo here, and then I'm going to have a container. So I'm going to say div dot login container, and this is going to have all of the forms and everything that we're going to have. So the sign in. So inside of here, we're going to have a H1 which says sign in. So sign in, and if we save that, you should be able to see it on the screen. So it will say H1 sign in. We're going to have an email. So here I'm going to say H5. So we're trying to build this. this. Just, we're trying to build this form here. Exactly that, yeah. Cool. So so now I'm going to say, um, so before I actually have this, I'm going to say form. So I'm going to surround the whole thing inside of a form, so that way we get that whole enter functionality. So here we do this, and we'll say email, and I'm going to have an input field, okay? And then I'm going to have another H5, and I'm going to say, um, I'm going to have another H5, and I'm going to say password. So this is going to be password. And here I'm going to have another input field, so I'm going to copy that, paste it, and save. So now we have a rough outline of sort of some email and password login stuff. Um, and then what we're going to do is actually have a sign-in button. So we actually want to have a button underneath that, so button. And this is going to say sign in, okay? So we have the button to sign in. So you can see we've already got like an outline for a sort of basic sign-in form, okay? So it's very simple. And on Amazon's website, this is a little bit of cherry on the top. So we have the, the form, and they basically have this where it says, by signing in, you agree to Amazon's conditions of use and sell, blah, blah, blah. But it just adds that little authentic Amazon touch. Uh, I like and they even that, have another, yeah. Yeah, you know, like once we get it styled, right, it'll look really nice. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the button, and here we'll say, create your Amazon account. Exactly, so... Because you just showed it on the screen of what our end goal. So this is how it looks right now. And let's show what it would look like after. Yeah. So we're going to go from that to that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and style that. So right now we have the um, login.css. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is go ahead and go to login. So here. And I'm going to style it by giving it a background color of white because right now it's on a gray background. So I'm going to say everything should be white, right? So um, that should have actually, this, oh yeah, everything should be white, but I need to give it a height of 100 view height. So that will actually calculate how big your screen is and then it will give it a white background, right? So here that should have popped in. Um, so you should see a white, oh yeah, is that white background now? No need to say display flex. Let me do that first. 
so say display flex and let's also do so if I do that are these stars getting applied as I think now so right now the stars aren't actually getting pushed onto there so let's see so we've got login I've got login.css login.css uh, 100 view height class name login pulling it in Okay, so we've got login width. If I change this to 150, does that change? No, why is that? I'm not sure. Oh, we're not doing npm uh, npm start. Oh, no, we are doing npm. We are yeah. running, right? Yeah, 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 we're running. Okay, so let's go ahead and change something else then. So login container. Let's go ahead and start styling that. So let's do this and we'll fix that in a second. So login container. Let's say the login container should have a width of 300 pixels because right now that text is way too long. So if I save that, let's see if that restricts. Okay, so it is applying styles. So we'll get to the bottom of why that's happening. Um, so right now, 100 view height. And I'm saying display flex and I want to do flex direction column because I need to basically, I want to have, have everything in a column. So we do that. And then I want to say align items in the center. So that should work. So okay, that's really strange. Let me debug this quickly, one sec. So what I'm going to do by debugging, I'm just right clicking, I'm clicking inspect, and I'm just checking to see that my class names were added. So right now, nothing was actually added for the class name login. So it's interesting because it's not actually picking up that, that class name. And that is because, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. So this is a very easy mistake to make, guys. You see it says class name, the capital N. So before it was this. Oh, which yeah. Which is insane, right? <laughs> capital N, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and now if we do that, boom. It, it automatically gets the stars that we added. Okay. Oh yeah, look, so, Astrid caught that. He's like class name typo. Ah, nice. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Another myth. Myth also caught that. Awesome. That's nice to see. Everyone's like clued in. So. Hui Hui uh, Wen says, "Are you a web dev? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a web dev? God damn." Um, okay, so we've got the login now. So what we're going to do now is we've got login logo, right? Uh, but that's touching the top. I don't want it to touch top because it doesn't look very great. So uh, right now I'm going to add a margin top and bottom of 20 pixels. So margin top and bottom of 20 pixels. And you'll see that it gives that gap at the top, which is what we want. Um, the width is good and the margins are good. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to style this inside of this box, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is for the container, I basically want to say the, I want to say display flex. So I'm giving it display flex and that will put everything inside of a row. So it will scrunch everything up, right? Which is not nice. So we want to basically say, nope, make it a column instead. So it's, it's column. So now it, everything's sort of using the max space that it can. We want to say that the um, padding around everything should be 20 pixels because we want to kind of pad it in a bit. And we want to say that it should have a, a light gray border. So a light gray border around it. So there you go. So even just adding a little border immediately sort of makes it pop a little bit more. And the height we have uh, to fit the content. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, oh, the height actually didn't change anything, so we can get rid of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some some sort of, I like to show different ways of using CSS selectors. So previously, obviously, what we could do is add class names to everything, but I, I think it will be beneficial to you guys to see how I can uh, target things which are like direct children of this and like first child of something else. So in this case, I want to target all of the H1 elements. So, for example, this one, the sign-in uh, element, right? So in order to do that, that's inside of the login container. So here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say login container, the first child, which is a H1, so like a direct H1 child of a login container, I want the font weight to be 500 and the margin bottom to be uh, 20 pixels. So if I save that, look what happens. It finds it and it styles it, yeah? 
And what I'm also going to do now is show you how you can also do nested. So like, for example, here we have a form and I want all of the H5 elements to be styled. So but I, but I want to basically only use this class name to style them. So I'm saying go and find the login container, go and find the child, which is a form, and then go and find the H5 element as opposed to giving every single thing a class name. So I'm showing you both ways as to how to do it because I find I think that would be useful to everyone. So now what I'm going to say is this. So I'm saying go to login container, go to the form beneath it, and beneath that form get the H5 and then give it a margin bottom. So if I save that, notice how everything should get a little spacing. right? I'm going to do the same thing for the input now. So if I go here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm giving the input fields a, a bit taller because right now they're too small. Give them a margin bottom so it doesn't touch the field below it too closely. A, back, a white background and a width of 98. And the reason why I'll show you 98 in a second is it will make sense because right now there's some padding to consider around the, the sort of um, input fields. And as a rather than adding padding and things like that, 98 perfectly aligns with the Create Amazon Account button. So we can just go with that and it works pretty nice. Um, the next thing we want to do is the P tags. So the P tag I'm referring to is this disclaimer. Um, so what we're going to do is basically add a margin to the top so it's not touching that sign in button and I want the text to be a little smaller. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and style that. So we've got the margin top of 15 pixels and the font size of 12 um, pixels here. So if I add that, there you go starting to come together and the sign in button and the register button are the last two things and I will go ahead and give them classes because uh, we've got a few of those so I'm not going to just mess around too much with those buttons so in this one I'm going to go ahead and give this one login sign in button and for the register button I'm going to go in and give this one this login register button okay and then what we're going to do is I'm pretty much going to apply the exact same styles that you saw earlier um, to the buttons. But So the first one I'm going to do is the sign-in button. So this is a snippet of what we've seen earlier. So remember we had that gradient border color. We had that background paint, uh, orange. And these are the same values that we saw earlier. So you can save this and look what happens to that sign-in. The sign-in looks immediately Amazon like it looks like the Amazon sort of signing button, right? So it's, yeah. it's really it's starting to look there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to use similar styles, but I'm going to not have the background color. So I'm going to do that for the uh, register button. So now if I save that, you see, we get like a very nice contrast. We get an immediate sign in button which is the sort of call to action that you're gonna you want the user's attention to go towards but then if they don't have it the secondary function is to create an account okay so what we can do at this point is for the input type here we can do email and for the input type here we can do password and for the button as it's inside of a form we can do type is submit All right and that will give you that sort of typical form behavior of when you click enter it will submit and what we need to do now is hook up two functions. So I need an on-click login and an on-click register. So here I'm going to have on-click, uh, on-click, and here I'm going to have login. For when they click sign in, right? And then the other one you're going to have yep. for creating an account. Exactly. So on-click here would be on-click is register. Okay. So these are going to be local functions. So I'm going to go ahead and create them at the top. So I'm going to say const login takes an event. And I'm going to do e dot prevent default because guys, if you have a form and you submit that form, it's going to cause the page to refresh. So in this case, if I click sign in, it's going to cause the page to refresh. And in React, we hate refreshing. So we get the event that gets fired off. So here, this is actually an event. So I can rename that to event. And you do prevent default. This will stop the refresh. So this stops the refresh. So you have to include this line. Okay. And then we're going to say login stuff. So do login stuff to do the login logic here. So there we go. Do login, lo lo login logic there. Okay. Then we're going to have another function. So I'm going to copy this. And this is going to be for the register. And this one, again, it will do prevent default, do the register logic, okay? 
Now, this is where it gets very crazy as to how powerful Firebase is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go over to our uh, Firebase uh, console. Yeah, go over to our Firebase console and go to authentication. All right, so go to authentication. And in, or in order to get this um, working like we need it, basically, if you go to sign in method and go to email password and just enable it. It's that crazy, guys. If you just enable that and you click save. <laughs> Like it's literally every it's other platform oh. authentication is like takes forever, and here is like, oh, just go enable it. Yeah, it's insane how that works. Um, so we do that, and now what we're gonna do is that's all that we need to do on the back end. So we go back to our code, and let's load up localhost on the right. So we've got localhost running. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say for the login log logic, I'm basically gonna have it so that we do auth. So remember what I did in, when I set up the Firebase, uh, so when I set up Firebase, I, we exported this auth module, and this is everything that we need in order to handle the logging in, the logging out, and all that stuff. So now what I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna say auth dot, so I have to import that firstly, so I'm gonna import that from our local Firebase, so here, and I'm gonna say auth dot, and then basically we have this amazing function that's built into Firebase and it's called auth.signin with email and password. So it, it couldn't get any more straightforward, guys. So like here, and what we're going to do is, but here we need the email and we need the password, right? We need the email and we need the password. Oops, email and the password. But we're not currently tracking this from our input, our inputs, right? So we've got the input uh, here and input here, but we need something to keep track of that. So basically before we do that, we're going to use something called uh, state inside of React. And the way we do that is basically the short-term memory. So here, I'm going to set up a variable. So it's basically how to write variables in React. So here, I'm going to write a variable uh, which will represent the email. And that we need a second method that comes alongside it. And that's called set email. And that's how we update the value. Here we say use state. And the initial value is blank. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing for the password. And if you want to look into this more, there's the React docs for, uh, this is for the use state hook. Uh, the React docs are amazing and they pretty much explain and give you examples of how you use the use state hook um, and it's really, really going to help you out. So now if we go over, we need to import this. So I do this, use state, and there we go. Now I've set up two pieces of state. Now the magic here happens, I love that comment. <laughs> Man, this channel is underrated. Thank you so much. Um, so now if we go to the input, right? So we need to map the values here. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna map the email value here, and we are gonna map the email, uh, the password value here, so password. So uh, if you just try and type in Kazi, notice how it's not going to uh, let you, um, it's not gonna let you um, change anything. So if you try and type in, while I type in. Yeah, it's not letting you type in, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's not letting you type in. So at this point, what we need to do is because it's Fault mapped. says but use hawk. Use hawk. <laughs> use hawk. <laughs> so like we've mapped it, but the, the value is blank and it's constantly being mapped at. So we need to listen to an on change. So on change is the magic here. And basically what we do is we get the event and we say every time we type in, we're going to say set the email to event, oops, event dot target dot value. And what this is basically saying, oh, come on, event dot target dot value. There we go. Event dot target dot value. And basically what this is saying, guys, is that when you type in, I want you to basically go and grab the latest field that was in there and uh, push that into the email variable and re-render and do all the sort of clever logic they need to do. We're going to do the same thing for the password. So what we're basically saying with all of this is that now we have two React variables, um, so which are basically stored in the state. And these two variables are going to contain and keep track of what is typed inside of those input fields for email and password. 
Now, once we have those, we can actually carry on and do what we were doing before. So we can say auth dot, and then we can say sign in with email and password, because now we have the email and we have the password, because we have these two variables up here, right? And what we can do is we can say, so if everything actually works, then it's as simple as just saying dot then, and then that will give us back some kind of authentication. So it will give us some kind of object back, right? We don't really care about what that object is at this point. But then what I'm going to say is, here, uh, logged in. So here you logged in successfully. So we will actually want to redirect at this point. So redirect to your homepage, okay? Um, and then here, what I want to say is, if there was something wrong, catch it. And because right now we just want to, we don't really care too much about the front end. We just want to say alert. So this will pop up a sort of like, uh, the sort of browser pop up and it will say alert e dot message. So it will just show a message from Firebase. Uh, so for example, if you logged in and, and the credentials are wrong or something like that, it will pop up with that. Now for the register, we do something very similar. So we say auth dot, but here what we say is we say create user with email and password and I pass an email and I pass a password. But here what I do is I say then and I say auth because we basically, if it's, remember guys, then is when everything goes well. It's when you things went well and nothing broke. So here I would have said, created a user and logged in. So that's what happens when you do this. So here we would do the same thing, guys. We would say, logged in, uh, redirect to homepage. So again, here I would say, logged in, cre uh, created a user and logged in. We then want to redirect to the homepage, okay? But if anything went wrong, we say catch it, so catch it, and again, we just want to do this where we basically alert on the screen in a very simple, easy way. Now, that's literally all we need to get authentication up and running, but with that said, there are two steps now that we want to do. One is the redirect. We need to fix the redirect, okay? We need it so that it redirects to the home page if everything went well. To do that, that's the first thing we're going to solve. To, to do that, um, React Router gives us a really nice hook. Okay, It gives us a really nice hook called Use History. So step one is redirect. And also, just to sort of clarify, step two is going to be listening to um, sort of listening to if the user logged in or logged out and basically pushing that value into the data layer. So listen to login, yeah, listen to login. And we wanna push it into the data layer. Yeah. And I'll show you a really nice way we, that we do that. So here we have the use history, right? So what we're gonna do now is we are going to say, um, so the first thing to get this variable working, you just say const history equals use history. And for those of you who are familiar with browser history or like any sort of redirecting, usually you push into the history when you wanna redirect. So here, all we need to do is as simple as saying history.push forward slash. And that will actually do a, so a reason why we push here instead of do a replace is that, say for example, when you click the back button on the browser, we want them to be able to come back to the login page. So you know that that natural behavior, right? Um, so we're going to save that, and I'm also going to do the same thing here. But notice how we only do this redirect, guys, if nothing went wrong. So it, only if we land in the then block, right? So only if we land in the then, then block. So only if we've successfully logged in do we want it to actually happen. So that's step one. So we just solved the redirect. So this will actually redirect us now, okay? But what we want to happen now, so is it will log us in, yes. But do we one know that we're logged in, or like how do we how do we go about that? Because it will log us in, and then even if I refresh, it will actually still be logged in. But what we need now is we need some kind of listener which is going to always listen to that login logout event, and if it does, we need to update our data layer so that we can then keep track of what's going on. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Kazi, happy birthday in the UK, bro. Yeah, thanks. Hey. Oh, well, damn. It's exactly crazy, 12 a.m. in your case. <laughs> I just realized. I saw it in the messages. Oh, nice. Happy birthday, yeah. bro. Howdy. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. I'm 26 now. Damn, bro. Nice. Wait, how old are uh, you? 
I'm 25. I'm turning 26 in September. Oh, damn. One month after me, huh? That's it. Oh, man. No, wait. Straight up. <laughs> it's, it's a well-deserved break after this. <laughs> damn. Wow. I mean, to, it's going to happen um, in eight hours is my birthday in California here. But, like, that's funny that in different parts of the world. Because somebody else wished me, too. Yeah, that's why I, I realized. Because here it just turned 12 o'clock. Yeah. That's dope. It, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's twelve. Yeah, it's midnight, guys. So I just want you guys to take a second and just uh, thank Sunny in the comments below because it's midnight his time, you guys, and he's been out here grinding and streaming since what um, almost six hours straight. We're almost about to go to six hours straight. So guys, just let him know how much you love him and appreciate him for being here and coding and building this entire thing up for you guys because that's really awesome, dude. No, I appreciate that, dude. Honestly, it's, it's crazy to be able to do this stuff. And like the fact that so many people are watching and getting involved and commenting and engaging with us, it's amazing. So it's really, really nice. Yeah, this is awesome. Nice. People are saying happy birthday. Damn. <laughs> well, true. Happy birthday from <laughs> Texas. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, Steve, that was interesting. He says he has spent 35 years as a developer. He mostly uses TypeScript, which also you use, Sonny. Yeah, I use and, TypeScript, yeah. And then he's like React, React Native, and Preact. I also coach and teach. Saw one of your videos the other day, and I would recommend your channel for new devs. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, this channel would Thank be is so great much. for new devs, and I feel like people who are probably a little bit more experienced. But, you know, somebody who has 35 yeah. years of experience, you know, maybe they'll still pick up some uh, trip tips and tricks that yeah. Sunny's got. Definitely. And, and guys, like it doesn't matter if you're new or you're experienced. I always find even if I if I I don't consider myself an expert at all in React, I always keep go in with a with a sort of beginner mindset and try and like sponge in and, and just learn everything I can. Um, which is awesome. Melbourne yeah. says, Sunny, love and appreciate you. Love you too. <laughs> thank yeah, you very Reaper much. says Sanga, you're <laughs> the best. Uh, thank you so much. That's Tyrone nice. says Sunny, you're a legend. I love that. <laughs> That is awesome. Nice. All right. Let's uh okay, this is awesome. Nice. All right, I want to get back uh, to it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um right. awesome. So let's we have the login. Oh, thank you so much, Amina. <laughs> nice. Uh so we have the um yeah, so we've logged in, right? So we need a listener now, right? We need a listener and um Basically, where we put that is inside of app.js. So let's go over to app.js. And basically, the reason why I put it here, guys, is because now you can actually see what I meant by keeping things high level, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, at this point, we have every single thing at such a high level. We have the routing, and then we have pretty much at this root, render this and this, at this root, render this, at this root, render these two. It's so clean. Like it's really clean to, to sort of maintain and come in here and figure out what's going on at what root, right? Yeah. So what we need to do now is basically we, we are going to use a combination of two things. We're going to use a, uh, so first thing we need the data layer. So let's pull that in. So we've got the data layer here. So let's go ahead and do import um, like that. So we've got the data layer and let's go ahead and we don't actually need the basket here, but I'm just going to leave it there. We're going to have the dispatch. Um, we do need the dispatch and guys, all we need right now is we need the, a use effect. We need basically, we need a piece of code. So I always explain it this way. We need a piece of code. So a piece of code, which runs based on a given condition. Okay. So this is what we call a use effect hook. And this is tremendously powerful, guys. Like this is seriously powerful and you should definitely learn this. Um, a use effect is going to be your best friend when it comes to understanding how to rewrite um, class-based components into functional components. Um, it comes in really handy when you start doing that. But right now I'm going to say use effect. And this basically takes a... Um, it takes a function, so let's go ahead here, and it takes a function, and the second argument is the dependency. So here, if we leave this blank, it's going to run once when app com the app component loads, and then it won't run again. 
Okay, so it's going to run one when the, once when the app component loads, and it won't run again. If I put basket in here, for example, it's going to run once when the app component loads, and then every single time the basket even changes, right? So that's going to be a really big deal, right? Um, and that's something that we need to remember and sort of uh, keep in, keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and now I don't want the basket now. I just want it to run once. And the reason why I want it to run once is because I'm going to create a listener which is going to be listening all the time to um, if the user signed in or signed out, okay? And if we was to create several listeners, then it's going to actually sort of, it's going to become quite expensive and it's going to actually be, um, it's going to slow the computer down and just make everything sort of, it's going to make your browser just freak out. and It's going to make Chrome go a bit crazy. So what we're going to do now is we are going to do this. We're going to import our auth module from Firebase. So go to the top and import that. And then what we need to do, um, yes, so somebody said a good thing. If you use a return in your use effect, then the result of that will run when the component is unmounted. We Yes, that's very correct. So if you return something inside of a use effect, when the component sort of uh, unmounts and it sort of re-renders, uh, re it will do a cleanup or any sort of cleanup that you need to do. So we are going to do that here. Uh, we are actually going to do that very, very, like very, quite like quickly now. So uh, here we have auth, and then they have a very uh, handy listener function, and it's called on auth state changed. Now this is what's so nice, guys. We are logging in and logging out in a completely different component. Like it's a login component and logout component. It's completely different. There's no sort of login logic in this file at all, right? But it's inside the same um, uh, same same project, so it picks up. But what we're going to do is, every time the authentication state changes, we basically say get the auth user. So it gives us something called the auth user, yeah, which is basically we can name this whatever we want, but that's what it essentially gives us back. So it's an authenticated user. Now, when this comes back, what we need to check, we need to say if there is an auth user, then the user is logged in. So the user is logged in. So you can do whatever you want to do at this point. Else, the user is logged out. So that's how you basically determine with this listener if the user is logged in or logged out. Okay. Now, what we basically need to do at this point is say, um, what we need to do at this point is basically all we want to do is say, so inside of reducer, so inside of our reducer, uh, let me go ahead and clear this basket. So remember we added these products. We can go ahead and make it an empty basket to begin with. But we've already got this uh, initial blank user, okay? So we've initially got this initial blank user. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new case. So I'm going to say case, and I'm going to say set user, All right? And this one is going to be like... The only the only purpose of this is going to be to update the user when they log in or when they log out, okay? And what this is going to do is just going to return the current state. So that's how we do this. We return the current state. And basically, I'm going to set the user to whatever the action.user was. So if it came in as no, it would set the user to no inside of the store. If the user was authenticated, it would set the user to whatever the authenticated user was. And that would be then in the data layer for us to use throughout the uh, the component tree. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go over to app.js. So now here, it becomes quite simple, actually. All we need to do is dispatch when we log in. So dispatch. And I'm going to basically pass an object here. And the first thing is going to be type. Sunny, you have a perfect British accent. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> see the proper British accent. <laughs> so here, what we need to do is we need to say set user, and I'm basically gonna say here I'm passing a user, right? And the user that I'm passing here is auth user because that's the one that we get back. And I'm checking if it was present. So I'm saying if it was present, just set that response to the user object. And then that way we get all of the sort of stuff. So a lot of people are asking if we're using Redux in this project. We're using, um, we're actually using React Context API as an alternative. So that's the answer to that question. Um, so here we, we do is if the user is logged in, we basically push them into the data layer. Else, when the user is logged out, we're basically going to dispatch the same thing, so the same thing, but we're setting the user to no, okay? 
So that's a really important point there. We're setting the user to no. And we need to also uh, import use effect. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. There we go. Um, so we set the user to no. So I hope this makes sense. So when we log in, we're actually pushing the user into the data layer. When we log out, we're setting the user to no. Okay. And now, remember, guys, when I said, like, if anything changes or for some reason it renders again, what we need to do is we need to clean this up. So this listener actually returns us something called an unsubscribe, which is very nice how Google have done this, right? It returns us something called an unsubscribe. And what we can do in, um, in, uh, in React, which is really nice with these hooks, is uh, the use effect hook has something called a cleanup. So you just return something from the function. So this is how you do a cleanup. So any cleanup uh, operations go in here, go in here, right? So like even if you had a timer, you would, you'd clear the timer here or whatever you want to do. And basically all we're going to do here is just say unsubscribe. That's it. We say unsubscribe. And that will detach the listener. And then, like, say, for example, if, if this app re-rendered for any reason, it would uh, detach it and then reattach it with a new listener, and it would do everything, okay? So what this now means is what we can do is we have both parts of the equation right. And Daniel uh, Duca says, well, written code. Thank you very much. It's a very clean way of doing this. Um, so what we are now going to do is... We have the, and this is completely decoupled, guys. So it's really nice. In login.js, we have all of this login logic, um, and it's completely separate to app.js, because here we have a listener. So you see, that's the way you want it. You want it in completely detached, and so that it's not um, going to be uh, attached and sort of too coupled, uh, or tightly coupled, we call it. So with that said, now we, what I do, I always do this to just check if everything's working. What we can actually do here is rather than getting the basket from the state, I'm actually going to go ahead and get the user from the state, okay? And I'm going to console log the user. So I'm going to console log the user. So I'm going to console log the user. So now, uh, Kazi, if you could, so if you could just go to um, the actual, so bring up the console. And let's go over to, yep, so bring up the console. And we should see now that, uh, so let's, let's see the console. We should see now that we have, so I'm going to go ahead and add a debug statement. So I'm going to say something like uh, user is, and I'm just going to do this and say user is this. So what we're going to do now is if we, yeah, so user is no. Can you see that, right? So it yep. says user is no, right? So we're not logged in right now. Um, and you see, that's at the app.js level, even though we're in the login command. So now what I want you to do is, if you could just enter an email, a password, and click create your Amazon account. Because remember, if you actually create sign in, for, click sign in first, and you'll see it doesn't do a redirect. So, so firstly, it says the email address is badly formatted, which is great, because that's actually Firebase coming back, and it's at that catch statement. So what we just saw there was at this point, so we saw the catch, right? So... Uh, if you go ahead and add the yep, and add the password, so ABC, ABC or something like that, and click sign in first. So you see, there's no user record, so the user may have been deleted. So nice, that came back from Firebase. But if we click create, look what happens. It signs, it logs in, right? So it's actually created an account. It's logged in, and if we scroll down into the um, into the console, you'll see that the user is no longer no. You can see the user should be. So let's go down. The user is yes. And we've got an authenticated user now. And what's really cool here, guys, is if we refresh, that listener will pick up. Or it basically, I'm sure it stores it in the cookies, but you'll see now, look, we actually have the listener still logged in. So the, the person is still logged in, right? So which is very, very nice. Um, okay, so now what we are going to do is... Damn, that is awesome. So that's, it's crazy, right? Like it really works clean, and that's it's unbelievable. So and like, if you, if you click that and you uh, so click that object, and you'll see inside of it, you've got a bunch of weird stuff. I mean, we don't really need to know too much of that, but you've got inside of it, you've got email. So you have the email, things like display name, which we used in the Instagram clone, but you've got the email there, right? Nice. You've even got it email even verified. Knows it verified, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is crazy, right? Um, 
What's it called? Um, so Aminat says he's got to get asleep and no worries, dude. This is going to be recorded so we can actually, you can rewatch these things um, uh, at your own pace. Nice. So now what we are going to do is, um, so we've got the login working, the redirect worked. So now rather than saying, hello, Kazi, sign in, I want it to say hello at whatever email you're signed into, right? So this yeah. just goes to show you how powerful this all is now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the header component, so header.js, and here instead of basket, I just do user. That's it. Uh, I don't know. Were we using this basket here? Uh, no. Yeah, we are. So I'm keeping the basket. Sorry. So I'm going to get the user as well. Uh, we don't need that. And basically, what I can do now is you can see there's no prop drilling. I just go into the data layer, say go get that. And what I can do now is at where it says hello Kazi, I can actually just say hello, and I can say here user email all right and also what i want to happen is i'm going to add some really nice little bit of code now so i'm going to go ahead and say inside of the header.js i'm going to say that the link to login is only going to show if the user is not logged in so if here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this is some javascript code here i'm going to say if there is no user, so if they're not logged in, then we want to push them to the login page, right? Otherwise, I want to basically have it. So I'm going to go into. So it's only going to do that if they if they um, um, if they are logged in. So it's only going to push them to the login page if they're logged out. So then I want to basically have it so that if they click on the um, if they click on that hello Kazi sign in part. Right, I'm going to have it so that, let's have it so if I'm going to create a function here, so I'm going to say, I'm going to have a function up here saying const login. So this is when they click on that option, right? And basically we're saying if there is a user, so if they are signed in, then I basically want to do sign out. So I want to say auth.signout, and I'll show you why, right? And this will make a lot of sense in a sec. So I need to pull in the auth module from Firebase. This bit is really sort of clean in how we do it. So we've got auth.signout um, login. So now basically here I have login. So here we have sign. So right now it says sign in always. I don't want it to say sign in always. I want it to say sign in when there is no user, right? So I'm going to have it so that instead it says if there is a user, I want it to say sign out. Okay. Otherwise, sign in, right? And all of this logic, and it's only going to redirect me to the login page if there is a, if there is no user. And this login function is going to check if they are logged in, then it's going to sign them out. Now, this combination works really elegantly because if I save this, now check out what happens. So it's going to say hello, and it says Kazi at the top, and then it says sign out. So let's make the screen a little uh, wider so that it doesn't um, doesn't get too thing. Uh, yep, there we go. And if we click sign out, yeah, boom, it just signed you out. And you can see now at the bottom, you see it dispatched the action to set the user to no. Oh, and it wow. Set, and then, right? And if yeah. we click sign in, now the two will be, um, it will be a true, so it will push us to the login page. Oh, wow. Which is just so clean, guys. It's that just really, so really clean. nice. Yeah, and it's so, so clean, and it's a really, really nice way of doing it. Damn. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I hope you like that, because that's, that's a really nice sort of nice finishing touch on it, right? Yeah, that and now like... you can imagine the sort of use cases you can do here, guys. Like We can have it so that like if we wanted to, we can actually have it to the point where if you try to add something to your basket, we could just check if the user exists. And then if it, if they want, before you add it to the basket, it could take you to the login page and do that kind of check, you see? But like it, to do all of that, it would be really easy now because we have this data layer. So everything's so nicely and decoupled and like you don't have to bother about like if this knows about this or if that knows about that. It's yeah. just everything is completely like isolated and built on yeah, its own Yeah, that's term. kind of beautiful. Yeah, it's it's all isolated. That's the cool part. Yeah, and now imagine you've got a team of like 10 developers, right? If they're all coding on isolated things, 
the likelihood of breaking stuff is actually not that high because all you're doing is you, everything's sort of detached. Yeah. Whereas if we were doing prop drilling and we didn't use the data layer like React Context API, you could one simple prop change. Like remember when we got the item wrong for the ID, it caused the whole riffraff. In a big company, that would become like it would be really tough for like 10 developers to work together if things are really tightly coupled. That's why we write our code this way and we have it very maintainable and sort of uh, understandable in this way. So I think, Kazi, with that said, we actually just finished the final point. Really? Are you sure? Because yeah. one of the things that um, when I, if I, oh, when I refresh, you're right, it does actually go away. Yeah. Oh. But if you are logged in, if you, yeah, so your login would stay persistent, but your refresh, uh, the shopping basket at the moment is non-persistent because we're using the, we're using um, store, yeah. Got it. Okay, sick. Awesome. So are we ready to deploy this now? I think we're ready to deploy. Oh, snap. Okay, let's... So uh, let's go ahead and like ring that little bell. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right, guys. We're done with building the login page. And so now I'm going to change that arrow from a finger pointing to a check mark. And uh, we're going to be on to the next step. But first, we're going to hear a little. That's right. We just finished the login functionality. Now, guys, it's time to actually deploy that app. So at this point, I know um, a lot of you guys are tired. And I know, I mean, I'm, I'm tired. Sunny's tired. But are you guys actually excited to see this app go live? and be able to actually use it. Yes, you will be able to use it from the chat. Are you guys excited? Exactly. And guys, when you actually, when we deploy this, we want you guys to go and visit the actual website that we deploy, check for yourselves, play around with it, have a play with it. And if you guys like it, shoot a story for it and post me and Kazi and tag us in it. And guys, it's Kazi's sick. birthday soon, so you have to do this. Just for <laughs> yeah. his birthday, you just have to do this. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys will make my birthday like so amazing if you guys actually make a story of the app and like record yourself and record it and tag us, like that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, awesome guys, so at this point, we are going to deploy really soon. So let's yeah. actually go here. So let's open yeah. the command line up. So now what is it? It's uh, Firebase init. Yeah, so firstly, if you haven't done this before, you have to do Firebase login. Um, oh, yep. so like login will pretty much open up a prompt for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think at this point we've, we've already logged in. Yep. So, uh, we'll do Firebase init. Yep. Yep. And then here you have to pay really close attention guys and be careful for this step. So Firebase init, and then it's, uh, use just use the arrow keys to go down to hosting and you're going to press the space bar. Yep. Yep. And you press enter. Mm-hmm. And for use this step, you want to click on, yep, use an existing project, and you want to find your project. So I think here it's clone. Um, yeah, it's that one. Yep. It's, uh, it, it comes up weird because of the name, because it's Amazon. So it's, it's up, yeah, uh. that one. And then here, guys, you have to write build, right? You have to write build, and then you make sure you write build here, otherwise it will not work, okay? You have to use that. All uh, right. Build. And then here, it's a single page app. So, yes, we have to write, type in Y. Yeah, okay. Right? I'm seeing everybody super excited. Daniel is like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel is like waiting to click. To, you know, super excited. Awesome. Filani is lit. Thanks for giving us such a great project. Awesome, guys. Uh, love nice. the work. All right. So, now what are we doing? So, okay, now we're going to do a single page app. Yeah. So, we're going to hit yes. Y here. That's important, guys. Is Y. That Okay. Exactly. So, so now right. it's done. And that's it. So we've configured it. So we need to do oh, two commands we now. we did that mistake again, by the way. Which one? We oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> guys, make sure. <laughs> so it's, it, we can fix this. So make sure you're uh, actually in the Amazon clone folder. Yeah. Because make sure we've you're done inside we of this folder. Yeah. So here, to get the to get if you do end up running into this mistake, all you need to do is delete the Firebase RC and Firebase JSON files. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and you just need to run Firebase in it again. And re delete the build as well, right? Oh yeah, we can delete that, yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna do Firebase in it. Yep, and this will show you guys how quick it is as well. So don't freak out if that happens, just go down to your hosting. Hosting, boom, we're gonna existing project, boom. Let's go to clone, Amazon clone, build. And then we're gonna say yep. yes, it's a single page app. And mm. then build. So here we, yeah, no, so here we do two commands. We do npm run build. So it's the first one. one. And this will so actually now, package the app together. So it basically gets all of the stuff that we just right wrote here. and it pushes it into build. Yeah, and um, it's gonna strip out all the developer dependencies, all the stuff that you don't need in the actual deployment. Cause it needs to be lightweight, right? has to be very lightweight and like and it just strips out all the rubbish and it makes it like an optimized production build just like it says there so steve also said wrong folder yeah. Uh -huh. oh yeah he said See, good video really guys we'll be pointing people yeah. in your direction nice that's sick nice awesome all right yeah, so once this is done, let's see, NPM run build, creating an optimized production build. Uh, that's taking a little longer than it usually does. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so don't freak out. So then the next thing we want to do is once that's done, it will actually bundle it into uh, the build folder. If you make yep. any changes, you need to run NPM run build again to get the, the latest build. Um, yep. But now all we need to do is do Firebase deploy. And so now guys, my question get your phones is... Ready, get ready for this. Are you guys ready? That's my question to you. We are about to deploy. Do you want to see it deployed? Well, I hope that you are answering yes. And I see a lot of you guys are saying yes, you would like to see it deployed. Yeah. So at this point, guys, we're going to do a countdown. All right. Do a countdown with us and drop it in the chat below. Yeah. I think this is a very big moment. Yeah. Five, that's it. Four, three, two, one. All right, guys, we're going to write nice. Firebase. Is it going to be Firebase Deploy, Sunny? Yep, Firebase Deploy. All right, Firebase Deploy. And now, guys, it is time. It is deploying and it's hosting. It's using that build to deploy it. And now here That's is the it. link. That's it, guys. We are live. So I've and just sent the, mess, the uh, link inside of the uh, comment section. Guys, go check it out. And if you like it, What happened? Know what you so, think? Comments. That's we it. are live, you guys. That is it. We have done it together. So great job, to everybody. And I have a little horn, and we are actually also done. So there is that little uh, uh, bell that happened right nice. there. Great job, everybody. All right, let's take awesome. this. Awesome. Okay. Paul Barty says, hi, guys. Learning a lot from you, too. Awesome. Glad to hear that, dude. Daniel Soladoy uh, says, does Firebase offer a way to keep track of people that create accounts with the app? Yes, it does. And it's actually inside of the console. So that's really cool. Uh, you can check it from inside of there. And you can also use the Firestore database to actually push the user's information in real time into the database. So that yes. will solve that issue for you. Yeah. Yes. Right. Awesome. Wow, guys, this was an amazing build. Thank you guys so much for being here. Guys, this is, again, the final version of the app. This is what it's looking like. You guys can actually go and play with it. You can log in. You can log out. You can add things to the basket. You can go to your basket, remove things. You'll see the subtotal change. There is user authentication, all of this functionality. You guys learned. So in, in wrapping this up, Sonny, yep. they have learned how to use React to build this app. They have learned about yep. context APIs. They have used, learned about Firebase hosting and Firebase authentication. Uh, yep. They have learned about how to use React routers so they could have pages like login and checkout. And yep. um, it's also a sing it's still a single page application. And they exactly. learned al also a lot about how the difference between things like a uh, link you know, component in React yep. versus href and how link loads the page instantly without refreshing. Yep, exactly. Uh, and we deployed it live. So, I mean, that's... Oh, and that's, a big uh, thing is data yep. layer. 
Exactly, yes. And the data there, so the React Context API. Uh, yeah. And I think that will actually be really useful for a lot of people um, running through that. But man, there was a huge amount of <laughs> knowledge bombs in this video. Like we went through a whole life cycle of an app build. I hope you guys found that useful. We got um, so many that, comments yeah. near the end. Everybody was going crazy. They're like, yes. Like <laughs> I, I totally missed these comments. So we had like people going, yes. Filani. Love that. Um, five, four, three, two, one. Even Astrin was counting down. Nice. I love hey, that. Hey, hey. Awesome. Wow, Ahmed, Tyrone C was counting down. He's like, one. <laughs> Astrin is like, let's go, legends. <laughs> beautiful no, I, link was there he's like yay learning <laughs> from you too best of the best i love dude, this you guys thank that. you for all this love really really Thanks appreciate so it so much for the support guys yeah uh astrid asks uh sunny can we use firebase if we want to create a web app for our clients like creating crud forms using firebase and not sql and node uh that's a really good question for you kazi what do you think yes yeah, exactly. You can definitely <laughs> have you can definitely have CRUD functionality in Firebase. Um, I think in one of the apps that we built, we actually in the To Do app, uh, we completely showed like the CRUD functionality in Firebase. But yeah, you can definitely have that. Um, and and if you check out a few live streams back, we've got all of that. So yeah, so so you're so good. Legend. Respect times three thousand. Thank yeah. you, Arpit. Looking forward to learning from you guys. And Daniel's like clicked on it. Awesome. You guys hopefully checked it out. Um, Abdul Basit is like big work. I <laughs> love that. Amar says <laughs> amazing guys. Hopefully you guys checked out the app as well and had some fun with it. Yeah. Uh, but guys, at this point, thank you so much for watching. We love you. Um, I am starving, so I have to go and eat. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. go <laughs> grab some food. And uh, send you any sign off message. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much, guys, for your support. You guys were amazing this video. And there's so many of you guys were so attentive and laser focused. And it's just so amazing to see. And it makes us guys really just want to carry on doing this. Um, so I hope you guys love that. And thank you so much for watching it. And yeah. a big, big happy birthday to Kazi. Let's all just drop him some. Let's, let's just drop a machine gun of comments in that section right now. <laughs> Where's that there? <laughs> thank you bro really appreciate it and i love this comment bella says you guys are so awesome you guys should be ready the best what i've gained here i don't think i gained this knowledge in the next two years and he says this is awesome. really react in its simplest form yes guys that's one Amazing. of the things that you will learn on this channel we take these concepts will make them extremely simple for you and then teach you how to make an income with those skills if there's one thing i want to leave you guys like what's your next step is guys if you have gotten value from this and you are excited about all of this, I want you to very seriously consider jumping into profit with JavaScript, which is our program where we literally teach you all of these skills and all of these apps. But the most important thing is like we handhold you to actually landing jobs, whether it's freelancing jobs or full-time jobs or whatever it is. So if you are serious about like, improving your skills and landing jobs and starting to make money with coding then definitely jump into that course definitely and make sure even if you guys are on the fence go check it out and give it a read um, because i think you'll realize that there's so much more value as opposed to what you're normally used to in coding courses or boot camps um, we give you very personalized feedback guys and you literally have immediate access to like chatting to me, chatting to Kazi. Everyone is literally there at your fingertips um, yeah. to guide you along from start to finish. Yeah. 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 Um, awesome. And all the information about that course is on that page. So click that link in the description below. It'll tell you how much it costs, uh, what's the program, and all of those details. But just make sure you go and check it out. And let's see if I have it here. Um, I don't. But yeah, just definitely go and check it out, you guys. Um, awesome. Yep. Thank you guys. Love you guys. Really, really appreciate you. Thank you for being here and part of this community and on this live and just giving us so much love. We love it. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys every day on these lives. And so we'll be seeing you guys hopefully tomorrow. That's it. Yep. This is Kazi. I love your face. And that is Sunny. Love you guys. Peace and out. We will see you in the next video. Peace.